You see, the Old Testament, especially the book of Exodus, is about a wedding proposal and a marriage. Where he will look at it and say, Laka, you are, most, you are my most treasured possession. Where he says, Segula. All these are the marriage proposal. There are five stages before the Ketuba. The Ten Commandments was the Ketuba, the, the marriage agreement that they entered into, signed by God and man. God wants to use your marriage. I want to ask a question. If we don't have this, I'm the cure for desert place, Shalom, Nigeria, fish sign, cross sign, or anything, because will people know that you and your wife are Christians? Because when Apostle Paul, uh, Apostle uh, John was writing the book of Revelation, do you know why they banished him to Patmos? They banished him to Patmos because they have done everything to kill him. He refused to die. They find, the one they did was that they put him in hot boiling oil and he did not fry. John. John. So they had, because if they try another thing and it doesn't work, Caesar will no longer be saved. And in that time, Christians were highly persecuted that you don't say you are a Christian. For you to go and be encouraged, or I want, you know, you, the Bible talks about encouraging one another. That means that I would have studied my, uh, this man's life. The way he treated his wife, the way he treated the children, and the way he conducted himself and his business. I will now take a risk. I would have done that for like three months or one year. I'm going to meet him and say, are you a Christian? I am a Christian. And if I do that and it's not, I'm killed. Now, when people look at your marriage, do they want to marry? Because it's warfare. Because that means you are stopping procreation. Today we now have girls that want to have children without husbands. In First Peter, I want to read it. Apostle Paul was Apostle Peter wrote um, the last part of se the second chapter was about submitting to your to your bosses, to those that you are working for. Now, when you are reading scriptures, eh, one of the way you interpret it is that what will the people that it was originally written to? How would they have re read it? Because I don't believe that Apostle Paul would have thought that his letters would still be read, read today. That was not his main intention. But look at what Apostle Peter was writing to them. Then they were, he was preparing them for the persecution that would come in Rome. In verse 1 of 1 Peter 3, look at what he says. He says, in the same way, wives, submit to your husbands. So that even if some of them do not believe the word, they will be won over by your conduct. Because some of them were being saved, but their husband is not saved. Without your saying anything, as they see your respect and pure behavior. Your beauty should not consist in externals, such as fancy hairstyles, gold jewelries, or what you wear. So I will finish him with clothes. When I dress, eh, with his head will catch fire. Rather, let it be the inner character of your heart with the imperishable quality of a gentle and quiet spirit. In God's sight, this is of great value. This is how the holy women of the past who put their hope in God used to adorn themselves and submit to their husbands. Verse 6. The way Sarah obeyed Abraham. Abraham. Honor him as her Lord. You are her daughters if you do what is right and do not succumb to fear. In other words, there are people that don't want to submit to their husband because of fear. What if I submit and he's wayward? 
What if I submit and things and, and it takes me for granted? They don't they put man, they don't they put it for under man, no. That's it. Don't submit to fear. Anywhere there is fear, don't look anywhere. Demonic spirits are there. Anywhere there is fear. I'm not loving my wife out of the fear that she will leave me. Because most times people do that. I'm submitting to my husband so that he won't slap me. I'm submitting to my husband because he will, he will, he will, he will so that he will not withdraw money and support for us. And don't, because when some men are angry, they don't pay the children's school fees. They disappear. That's fear. He said, you husbands, look at husband, this one, they have spoken about women. Women own plenty. Husband is about one line. It's one verse. He said, you husbands, conduct your married lives with understanding. You should respect her as a fellow heir. She's also a joint heir of the gift of life. If you don't, your prayers will be blocked. You know, as you block people, God will block you. If God blocks you, who will unblock you? So it's not the one that is not devil that is blocking you. So all the warfare you are doing, every every disaster fashion against me. I say by fire. I say sing it from now till tomorrow. You are blocked. <laughs> what did that man say? <laughs> you are blocked, you are blocked. You are blocked. Then you're one says it's my wife that's causing this thing, it's the witch in my house. No. <laughs> There's no witch that do well inside love. The witchcraft must go. But if you don't treat her with understanding, you are raising up a witch. Not with knowledge, but with understanding. <laughs> you see, many of us have Bible knowledge. You'll be arguing your, with your wife with scriptures. She's so emotional, scripture doesn't stay in her brain. <laughs> There's a conduct that you will give to your husband. He will follow you to church. He will follow you. There's a conduct you will give. Your husband will have a prayer life. You want demonic spirit not to stay in your house? Submit to your husband. That's what's in the Lord. You want your prayers to be unblocked? Treat her well. You want to command the attention of the king? Treat the daughter well. One day I told my wife, I said, forget it. Those years. I'm not staying here because of you. If you like backslide, I'm not backsliding. <laughs> this Apostle Peter is a married man. Most of the cancer we have are from Apostle Paul. He's not married. But it's still valid. That's why I say some of you will cancel married people. You are not married. It will block you. And the funniest thing is that they didn't say if she doesn't submit, she'll be blocked. That means that she'll be doing something, you will be going down, she'll be going up. That's why you say she's a witch.
You want to win the warfare? My wife, pray for me. There is nothing as powerful as a praying wife. That does not mean you go home now and say, my wife, you see, you know they pray. <laughs> because that's what I'm not saying. Uh, that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> How will she pray when the environment is not right? So you want to co labor with heaven? Pray. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This matter of submission and, uh, and love does not subscribe to Geneva Convention. You know, when they, when they maybe uh, pass a law, when they pass the child's right law, every uh, state now began to domesticate theirs. When they, they make a law in Geneva, they will say, ah, this country has signed to it. You see this thing we're talking about? The devil does not play by Geneva Convention. The word of God is what it is. Yeah. That is not your experience does not make it not to be the word of God again. For instance, when if a man of God dies early, does not mean that the scripture is broken in the aspects of long life. The scripture is the scripture. It can be broken, but you can break yourself on it. Yeah. Why I'm saying this is this. We must all arrive at the point where your heart is submitted to the Lord. Because if your heart is not submitted to the Lord, the Lord cannot direct your heart to submit to someone else. I was studying our father, uh, John, John the Beloved. At a time, John was calling fire and brimstone to come and fall on people. At a time, he was jocketing for position. Yeah. And then hired his mother as a consultant to come and uh, <laughs> talk with Jesus uh, so that he can get a position by the right or by the left. If you look down his life later, he's the one that now said, greater love has no man than this, than for a man to lay down his life for his friends. By the time he sat, he put his chest on the head of the universe, the, the creator of the whole universe. He was the one that was there when Jesus was beaten, when he was flogged, when Jesus cried, because he was the one that followed him throughout. There must have been something that happened to him. Friends, you see, every area of your life that has not gone, become a broken vessel in his hands, in those areas you begin to fight with how God wants things done. The Bible says we make the word of God of no effect because of our tradition. If we come here and say the Bible says we should submit, and then you start giving us 250 reasons why that scripture is not true. And then quote all the motivational speakers and run all the case studies. Whether you do that or not, the word of God is true. Submit to your husband is submit to your husband. Whether you like it or not, full stop. So what we need to do is to ask the Lord, all those areas of my life that is not pliable is not the the porter cannot mold it into he what he wants you need to ask him that those areas will become places of broken vessels you are a young man here somehow suddenly in your heart you believe that there's nothing wrong with sleeping with your girl there's nothing wrong with it and while we preach it here you put up a shield and bounce it off and say una they talk on her own me no say ah our grandpapa you know sleep with him my, my mama even pregnant before they bomb me. What are you saying? Now, no matter how you argue that, the word of God cannot be broken. Yeah. The scripture is what it is. You can't touch someone that you have not put bright price on her head. It is wrong today. It is wrong tomorrow. Except the Lord comes and rewrites the scripture tomorrow, then we can go by that. You can't kiss. You can't be in the same room and say we played. It's only that I didn't, I didn't, I didn't complete. We played, we played. You can't put yourself where you're playing. You can't be joking with the devil. The devil is not a pet. The devil is not <laughs> chihuahua dog that you can put by your side. You can't do that. Whether you like, if you look at me, I look at you back. If you like, call it old time religion, but this is what it is. There are some things we can't do 
because of the person we have given our lives to. And so all those hard places in our lives, we need to submit it to him. Let it become a broken vessel. Lord, break these places so that he can speak your word. Some of us in your heart is enshrined, entrenched, world view that comes against the knowledge of God when it has to do with relationship, love, and marriage. And in all those places, the word of God will be made of no effect. Yeah. You know, in Christianity, many of us are so entitled that you can even follow God to keep malice that he has not done his part. But all the places where you need to lay on him and say, break all these places in my life. Lord, I'm still in shrine in masturbation and masturb masturbation. 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 I still, the, my ex, I still have some things with my ex. I'm still hanging around my ex secretly. God, I ask you to break these places in my life. Amen. Friends, we are believers. You can't be drunk. Yep. If you look at me, I look at you back. We, we are, I don't know about others. Those of them who serve something, those of us, them who serve something, they subscribe those things. Okay, if you serve something, you get what in they forbid. If you serve Ogu, you get what in they forbid. You serve Shango, we get what in they forbid. You serve Oromela, you get what in they forbid. Those of, we listen, we are sacrificing inside the altar. They can't bring us out. They have to go there to meet us. If all of us sit at a lounge and everybody is drinking until they are drunk, you shouldn't be found like that. There has to be someone who will be alive to tell the story. My friend told me that before he was a believer, each time they go out, his friends will drink and drink and drink. They will say, drink. He said, he say, no, I don't want to drink. I asked him, why were you not drinking? He said, if all of us are drunk and we are driving and something happens, who will tell the story? So I make sure that my eyes are clear so that in case anything happens, I'll be able to tell the story. If you look at me, I look at you back. If you take your eye, eye to eye to arm me, I take my own to eye you too. The word of God is clear on these matters. Whether we like it or not, that's what it is. Husband, submit to your wife. Is husband, submit to your wife. It's going to be God must submit to your wife tomorrow, any day. And then the second aspect of it is where... The Bible says, it said, without saying anything. That's scripture. It said, yeah. without saying anything, yeah. there that will be one. You will be one. Without that's saying the, anything. He said, without saying anything. I tell my daughter, one. Iberia, sometimes when we are having mother and daughter talk, he said, but I didn't say anything. I said, no, you didn't say, but your body language spoke. Your body language will speak. Some of us, what is causing contention in your marriage is not what you're saying. Body it's language. what your body language. Because in the law of communication, Words and meaning is 10%. I've taught you that thing before. Body language, body language is about 52%. So, your behavior is shouting so loud that I can't hear what you're saying. So, sometimes you have not said anything, but you have said so much, not just in marriage relationship, but also in other aspects. There are children, you send them on an errand, they're going on that errand, but they're carrying an attitude as they're going on that errand. Please, don't let him, it has to be a teachable moment, you have to stop. Come, let's talk about this attitude. Because after tomorrow, you will not be able to explain that attitude again. Let's talk about why, the, the way you are moving and you are complaining, we need to talk about it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Then, the aspect of it that I love so much is women, you know, we like to dress well. We love to dress well. In fact, we have slay queens and sl sl slay kings now. Please slay first with your behavior. Slay first with your behavior. There are some men have complained about murmuring and nagging. So many, so many have complained about, some of us are experts in the profession of nagging and mummy. Some women are like that. Some men are like that. Some men women are like that. It's, it's individual basis. There's nobody that is perfect here. All of us are a work in progress. Yeah. But we should now look at the aspect where you know you're a work in progress and call it what it is. You can't be excusing rage. You can't excuse it. You say, my father used to be worse than this. 
my father when he's angry he will take knife and chase everybody at me i know they use knife now, now no the bible says you shall be greater than your father if your if your father was there you're not supposed to be there but there are some people no matter how well you treat them they are just god forgive me too they have bad behavior you submit to them is a problem you love them is a problem if you found yourself in such a marriage god will help you Amen. god will help you my final statement for all of us is that please please we need to create safe places for our children it takes three hours when you're doing therapy it takes three hours to finish one case sometimes when you so if you have 12 hours knock out three hours in two six people in two people that's six hours minus your 12 hours go by the time you finish in and come out you look like someone that went for world war four battle you are beating up and down so the things that are causing this trauma because the brain is shaped by the by the relationship is called attachment theory your brain is shaped by the relationship and it affects how we relate with each other the same way with trauma there are some of us here there's something called emotional abuse there's something called verbal abuse there's abuse called neglect and all kinds of abuse we need to watch these things you need to watch when you are abusing the other person you haven't beaten the person physically but you have used neglect to punish you see this telephone you see this phone may god deliver us from the spirit of of status watching status watching and god also deliver us from the spirit of addiction to football two of you are at home two of you are at home you take status like this some of us some of them in this church their wives will be calling them they won't hear oje 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 god will deliver us in the name of jesus i'll just use him to make it why are you look at you look me i look you back may god deliver all of us from you're watching man you you're watching us and i'm not bugging i'm not bugging for me so when i got married from day one i saw it i told myself as, as you mean i'm in labor and they are playing football if i if i come out i won't hear because if you're watching something you won't hear so once they want to start football then we didn't have generator i'll just go to the electricity <laughs> my wife they are taking light sir our neighbors have you said you know we don't have generator in our house after some time the football matter finish well some of them are not as bad as okay let me drive to where they're going to watch it and viewing center to go and watch it we need to care for ourselves neglect is killing families i'm not talking about myself now neglect is killing families we see when our marriages are powerful we can turn to the world and say to them jesus makes a difference without saying a word someone said something i quote if you have money your friends in the world are not intimidated they have more you have best of cars they are not shocked they have more but if you come to a point where they say ah this boy there are some things they know is a serious problem for them. They find you. They may laugh at you, woman, rapper, all of that. But they find a certain level of responsibility where you are. There are some discussions they know they can't discuss about with you. For instance, all of us are going for training in Abuja. And they are planning for girls to wait for them. They won't ask you. They won't talk about it with you. Because they know it's a no-go area. But if they know that you know not stand, you know, they'll come and ask you, uh, nah, should we just organize one for you by the side? Because you, they, you laugh. <laughs> Tomorrow, they, will keep, they won't ask you. They will keep for you. They said, the they even they wait for you for room. God bless you. <clears throat> you see, she said she was not ready now. But I, I, I thank God. The, the long and short of the story is that God, the earth needs faithful Joseph and Mary to allow heaven to invade. Family is not about the care for you. Family is about the next generation. 
So when we say family in Fem Foundation, don't think it's about a social meeting. Do for me, I do for you. No. It's about the next generation, raising the next generation. That we, are come, we came together as God is looking at the offspring that will come out of this union. Who will take the city gates for them. So also the enemy is looking for it. He's going after your offspring. Will you allow light, life and increase to come through your marriage? Or by your marriage, death decrease and darkness comes. Having children outside wedlock, if they have not gone, they have come into a covenant and a dedication that you don't like, which is what we have been praying about in the open heavens prayer. Same thing. The way you dress can turn a man's head hard. Before you know, rape. Before you know, the man. When I was reading the book of Isaiah, I saw two things. Maybe you read it. Hosea 2, 1 and 2. It said, take your prostitution dress that reveals your breast. Hosea 4, 11. It said, wine and alcohol has robbed my children of their brain. I don't say, and, and I don't push things. I'll say it and I leave it. I know you have the Spirit of God. When you get to me, it will work on you. What we have just said now is not for you to agree with us. It's for you to wrestle with. We didn't come to tell you we are right. Because the Western mindset, the way we are taught in school, is whether you are right and wrong. But the Eastern thinking is this. I want to engage scripture so that I will not miss out. You have a revelation I don't have. Can, I share, can you share with me? And I will share mine with you. And we read scriptures together and ask questions. So what was said today, go home. It's for you to ask questions. So if you are going to ask questions, we're here. And we also want to pray for marriages here today. That your offspring will be better than you. Amen. And for those of, the, of, of us here, I put it in my cell because what you are going through, all of us go through it. That are not married, believing God for a spouse, believing God for a wife or a husband, believing God that um, you are also believing God for your children. Or you're believing for, to have children. Maybe there's an issue of delayed pregnancy. We'll still pray for you. Or you are believing that your children are not, go, uh, or the, the way they are manifesting is not the way it's go. Two people decided to join together. And that's why you say Jesus is the reason for the season. Do you know what they went through? The shame and the humiliation. To follow God when it was counterculture. Do you know what it means now? Today when people say they love their wife, they are not going to have other concubines. Or they will mess up themselves. You know the type of humiliation they go through, wives. For their they say it's a live an affair guy. We'll soon catch him. You, 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 you know the humiliation sometimes when a woman goes through with other women who says that I know my husband is not going not having a good time financially and she's making the sacrifices. And going counter culture because it's one income, not multiple income. We we'll stay together and my husband will come out of it. Do you know what sometimes she will read? Or what sometimes some people will tell them? And this one comes from family members. This one comes from close friends who do not understand. Those are the things. Where you cover the shame of your wife, you cover the shame of your husband. And everybody comes out understanding that God is still on the throne. If you have any question, one or two questions, before we pray this morning. Okay. Ah, my great coyote. <laughs> Give him the mic. Morning. Yeah, it's, the, it's on. Good morning, everyone. So, my question is, in all of this that you've said, where is the time for, where is, I believe that it's supposed to be a me time in all of this. So, 
where does that fall in in all what you're saying? Because <laughs> when you were saying it, me and my wife, we were talking about, so where is my me time here now? What is me time? Like, my personal time. Me alone time. And I told her that, okay, my own time, I might just decide to play with my phone. I think that was when mama was saying, God will deliver <laughs> 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 that uh, God will deliver us from the spirit of the phone. And I'm like, okay, so when is my me time now? And I can decide to say, okay, my me time is, okay, I want to watch Bob. <laughs> and she turned off the light. <laughs> so I'm just wondering, where is where is my me time in all of this? Because I believe that should be a kind of balance in all. Thank you. Very excellent question indeed. First of all, too much of everything is bad. Secondly, um, do you know you can watch, I may not have loved to watch football, but if, for instance, playing golf, me and one person in this church know that is not our thing. But they dragged us and dragged us and dragged us and dragged us. We are playing golf now and we are beginning to like it. Okay? Now, I'm not going to talk about me time. During your meditation, by the time you're doing your meditation, meditation has so much strength and power that many Christians are yet to explore the power that comes from meditation. My son tells me, you tell me to do meditation. When I start doing meditation, when I'm so lost, that's when you come and call me, Yeshua! <laughs> I said, but you didn't tell me. If I know your prayer time, I will respect that time. If I know it, I will respect that time. Would you try that? Would you try that? I'm not saying you can't spend time with yourself, but I'm saying that whatever you do, should strengthen the connection that both of you have. Anything that is not strengthening the connection and the intimacy, the faithfulness and the devotion, I'm saying it's something to look into again and tweak it. Thank you so much. And the question, thank you. Why is your wife always demanding your time? For us, when we say we need me time, which is not why, uh, maybe she's not even satisfied with the one you are giving her. And also, she might also have a codependency relationship that needs to be healed of. Because this me time, most, I believe me time is, should be when you are talking to God. Because in the phone, you are, it's not your me time. You are interacting with other people. Me time is when you are made. When people say me time, the football is educating you. You are interacting with Ronaldo and Messi. Yeah. Fame is not me time. Me time. You know, sometimes, please don't begin to copy what the word says and hold it as the word of God. Your me time is when you have time to meditate and ask God questions. Self-assessment. Self Self-appraisal. That's what is me time. Biblically. I'm not saying you should not go and sleep or go, uh, watch this thing and do that. But for me, that's not me time. That's the time you want to relax and do other activities. <laughs> Do you understand? But when is her him time or her time? I know a pastor. Once he, clo once he closes from work, as he's entering the house, the phone goes off. The phone goes off. If I want to sleep, I put my phone in my drawer. Silent. Call from now to tomorrow. <laughs> Because that phone is even worse than devil. (laughs) 
you wake up 115 WhatsApp messages. Before you know it, your me time with the Lord is gone. It's for you to refresh. But I have time, create time for your recreation activities. But please, do it together. Let our love tank. You know, I told you one time at the beginning that sex is the... For women, it's talk. That's their number one. That's their food, though. Gist. Gist. Sometimes you don't even have gist. You just be listening. You say, mm-hmm. Hmm. No be small thing. They don't want you to, they don't want you to, to do this thing. Because they, my wife would tell me, I just said anything. You didn't say one thing. One thing. No, don't even say two things. Say, mm-hmm. Uh-huh. They, they, their anxiety is going down. Because you as a man, your words are finished. You have talked everywhere with people. You are tired. So just be, they say, hi. Now, wow. Hmm? Tell me story. That just be saying all these things. You have won a heart. All the blood pressure will all be going down. Then later say, hey, no, now this one I want me you to do for me. Rise up on your feet, everybody.